I got up this morning, I had choices. I had choices when I wanted to get up this morning. I woke up once and I thought, nah, it's too early, I'm gonna go back to sleep. You get out of bed, you have choices. Well, I didn't have that many choices. I had to take care of some specific things like feeding the dog and feeding the cats. And I gotta tell you, they are rather insistent about those things being taken care of. So that wasn't really a choice I had. But I really did have a choice. And the idea is that when you have a choice, you have to do this or you can do that. And usually what you do is you weigh the consequences of doing this or doing that. Usually they're not that bad. What am I going to wear? I have a choice. I could have gone to summer, but somehow it was kind of cloudy this morning, and I know that we're September. It's September. And to me, September, and I'm afraid that carries over from being involved in the school, that's fall, <clears throat> okay? And as far as I'm concerned, summer is over. Not really. The temps are still up. I know that. But times have changed, and we sort of moved over, and I know it's not going to be fall till the end of this month, but it's time to start thinking about it. We all have choices. Sometimes we make bad choices, and sometimes we make good choices. And the wisdom is knowing which is which. And sometimes we don't know which is which till we make the wrong one and discover, well, that was a mistake. I'm not going to do that again. Sometimes we do that when we pick up food and say, I wonder what this is going to taste like. Let me get that. Let me try it. Nah, mm -mm. Oh, nope, that was a mistake. That was, that's why I like buffets. I got to tell you, having a fellowship meal here is a real task. You go down there and you see all that food, and you have to make choices choices. Then you hit the dessert table and it's, oh, horrible choices. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one is going to taste the best? Well, you don't know till you taste them all. I went to a birthday party. It was a surprise birthday party and her husband had, he just sent out invitations. He didn't know how many people were coming. So he got one, two, three, six, seven. he got seven cakes, okay? He got seven cakes, because he kept saying, well, I got, and uh, he had three more in the back. And he says, well, I don't know what to do. I said, either you're gonna have it for, uh, this was Saturday, I said, have it after church on Sunday, or freeze them. Do one or the other, okay? Well, there was, there was carrot cake, there was a flat cake, you know, sheet cake. There was a uh, German chocolate cake, and there was peanut butter cake. Now, you may wonder why I know this, because <laughs> I do like cake. <laughs> and I told him when he was cutting, I said, you cut those pieces small. I want, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And he's there whacking it down. He says, I got to get rid of this cake. I got to get rid of this cake. Now, I didn't try the carrot cake. I didn't try the sheet cake. I had a piece of the other two cakes. And I'm here to tell you, they were sweet. <laughs> that was a mistake, <laughs> okay? I enjoyed it while I was eating it. But you know how you, when you take too much sugar in, how you feel like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I made the wrong choice, wrong choice. The scripture is taking place the children of Israel are on the banks of the Jordan River. Moses has given them a sermon, and we're in the 30th chapter. And you say, well, this looks like the end. No, it's not quite the end. But I got to tell you, this is the same message that's through the whole book. He's always talking to them. Hey, you got to make a choice. you got to obey. In fact, they even do, you got the uh, first covenant was at Mount Sinai. Well, the people broke it the golden calf. They had to make another covenant with God. And this time God had to forgive them for their sin, for making, breaking the law. The most important law, you shall have no other God before me. You shall not make a, uh, an idol. And he did both of them. They had to make another covenant saying, yeah, we read the rules this time. Did you ever say that? 
Do you ever go somewhere and they said, yeah. I went to get my uh, <laughs> real license and they looked at me and said, my, they looked at my husband and said, I'm sorry, your social security card is too old. Because <laughs> he got it, he had his original, he, and they said, your original social security card. And it didn't have those little pillars on the side. And they said, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to apply for another social security card. It says right here, <laughs> he says, yeah, but it says you're, you're original. This is my original. No, no, it's not. <laughs> and he says, yes, it is. <laughs> Got to read the fine print, people. That's what the children of Israel said. Oh, well, we sort of forgot that commandment. We'll, we will do better. We are sorry. We are sorry. And God forgave him, did another covenant at Mount Sinai. Now we're on the banks of the Jordan River, Moab. And they enter into a new covenant. Why? These people. Moses told God, they're stiff-necked. They do whatever they want to. Hey, they're, and you know, you know how we are. You know, we can say we are going to be good. But if something comes along and it just grabs our attention, we wander off. We get ourselves in trouble. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Ooh, should have known better. That's something you tell your children when they're growing up. Pick your friends. Pick your friends carefully. Because as a young adult, as a child, you can be led astray. My girlfriend led me astray. She used to drive really, really fast down to Huntington. You know, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I should have said something. Like, are you trying to kill us or what? She took the doors off a of Wrangler and ran that baby down to Huntington. So, you know, and it, that was before seat belts too. You know, so, you know, it's like pick your friends carefully, okay? Because you can be led astray. It's easy. It's our nature. We are truly sheep, <laughs> you know? We just see something that we go that way. He's talking to these people, and he's laying it out flat. I'm giving you life and prosperity or death and destruction. How can you be more clearer than that? What's your choice? What's your choice? Do I want to die? You have that choice when you go to the doctor. When you go to the doctor and they say, you got to change, well, this came up, you got to change the way you live. You do not change what you're eating, you will die. It will kill you. It's simple as that. So are you going to keep on eating the wrong foods? Or are you going to change your lifestyle and live? Now this prosperity and destruction, he said, if you wish to have life and prosperity, you have to love the Lord. Now, I looked it up, and it said in the uh, Near Eastern treaties, when they use the word love, what it means is you give honor to and you obey. Okay? So what it's calling us to do is to give honor to God and to obey him. I can't read it. <laughs> Walk in obedience. Yeah. Yeah. I was not the most obedient child. I will admit that. <laughs> after Sunday school, I'd run away. Or after, yeah, Sunday school, I'd run away. I didn't want to sit through church. So I'd run home. It was only four blocks away. And, you know, my sisters would be there, or my mother would be there, and I'd just <laughs> gone. Went home, you know. That's not being obedient. I once went into, uh, we had a dog named Lassie. It was a collie. And when I was growing up, Lassie was a big thing on TV. Long time ago, folks. Anyway, called the dog Lassie. I followed that dog everywhere. One day, I followed it into the cornfield in the bottom. My mother was concerned. She was sure I was going to fall in the river and drown because the river was on the other side of the field. My father said, she followed the dog in, she's going to follow the dog out. And I did. I followed that dog everywhere. 
but I wasn't obedient because I knew, I knew I shouldn't go in there. I knew I shouldn't go near that river either. Be obedient, obey. What you don't understand is being obedient keeps you safe. It keeps you on the correct path of righteousness to be obedient to the word of God. Keep his commandments and decrees. Deuteronomy, like I said, they talk a lot about choice. The Ten Commandments are reaffirmed in here with that Moab uh, covenant. And more than that, they give you case law. What if? What if you're going down the road and you see your neighbor's ox is running around loose? You should collect your neighbor's ox, take it home, notify your neighbor, and take care of the ox till they show up and give it back to them. This also applies if you find their cloak, uh, their sheep, any possession of your neighbor that you happen to find in your living, you see it along the road, you see it, pick it up, notify your neighbor, and take care of it. If you see, go down the road and you see your neighbor's ox is laying down in the road, you should stop and help pick that ox up. Now, you're going to say, I don't even know what an ox looks like. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what an ox looks like either. I know you all eat ox meat, but I'm not quite sure what it is because I have never seen an ox. Now, I assume it's out of the cow family, the bovines, but I'm not, you know, since I've never seen one, I can't tell you, all right? How many of you have ever seen an ox laying in the middle of the road? How many of you ever seen your neighbor broken down along the road? That's the question. And then you have this really weighty question, which Jesus answered, who is my neighbor? That's how you obey the law. God's law is about relationship between people. How do you treat each other? Obey his decrees. You know, people say, to get ahead, you got to climb over people. You got to shortchange them. You got to get ahead, you know? In life, getting ahead doesn't mean anything. In life, Getting ahead just means you get more worry, more anxiety. You worry about this, you worry about that. It's not the bigger house, it's not the bigger car, it's not the bigger salary. You know, the people who win the lottery, they win those millions, they either go bankrupt or their family tries to put a hit on them so they can get the money. Does this win? Does this win anything for them? No, all they get is worry. So where are you going to think about? God says, don't worry. And Jesus said this, hey, God's going to take care of you. If you're going to walk in God's path, he will take care of you. So don't worry about things that come up. You will find a way through them. God will help you. He will give you the wisdom to deal with them. Take it one day at a time. Don't worry about the future. In fact, don't worry, period. If you worry and you get anxious, folks, you will die because your body can't take it. Your body's not made for it. So you have to make decisions. You have to make choices. The choices are quite plain. Your neighbor is more important than anything else. Take care of your neighbor. When you see a need there, step in help out, even if it is an ox, which I don't think I could lift if I had to. I would try. I have seen cattle along the road sometimes when I know on, they're on the wrong side of the fence, and I have stopped and said, hey, your cow's out. <laughs> you know? That's important. So there these people stand. Now, you've got to understand something. This is, they're about to go into the, across the Jordan. They've already been at this bank once before. 
And they sent spies into the, ground, into the land. And when they came back, they said, hey, that place is full of giants. I don't think we want to go there. Joshua and Caleb said, hey, the Lord's on our side. People said, no, there's giants. We're not going in there. So what happens? They do not obey God. And they end up wandering for 40 years, more years in the wilderness until that whole generation is gone because they would not obey God. Now they're back at the River Jordan. And they're saying, now listen, remember what happened. Make your choice. You must make a choice. We all have to come to that realization and for us as Christians, that choice is not only at the brink of a river, it's in an everyday relationships with others. Whether it's our family, whether it's at work, whether it's at strangers in the store. We have to make choices of how we're going to interact with them. Make the right choice. Maybe you have to wait a bit and open the door for someone who's struggling. Maybe you have to carry something out for someone. That is more important than the worldly wealth or fame or anything like that. That is helping each other out, and that's showing love. The last part of this, it says, He will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were given a promise. You will have descendants like the sands of the sea or on the beach, and you will own all this land. Did they ever see it? No. It was a promise made, and it's been a promise kept. As they stand on the bank of the Jordan, God is saying, I am keeping this promise now. I made the promise. I am faithful, and I will keep the promise. God has made a promise to you. When you go to a doctor, you've been to that doctor. They've suggested things, and you did them, and it worked out well. Do you trust the doctor? Yes. So when the doctor tells you, well, you got to give up salt, sugar, <laughs> prepared food, are you going to trust them? Yes. Because they have proved faithful in the past. That is the same thing that happens here. God made promises. And I read somewhere where when they went down, when uh, Jacob went down with his family to Egypt, there were 70 in the family. 70. When they came out, it was 600,000. 600,000. I'm sorry, that storm looks like the pieces of sand on the beach as far as I'm concerned. So you see, he kept his promises, but you kept his promises in his time. Promises made, promises will be kept. You've been given a promise. And when you were baptized, you made a covenant with God that you would follow him. The same thing. I love the Lord your God. You will walk in obedience You'll keep his commands, decrees, and laws. And how do you know them? Read your Bible. Read your Bible and apply it. Because when something comes up and you're there going, oh, I don't know where to do this. I don't know what my choice should be. It'll be in here. Something will be in there. And it'll come to mind if you have read it. It will come to mind and you'll know what the correct choice is. Choose this day. Choose this day. Life or death. Blessing or curses. Choose. You've got the rest of the life, your life to go. This is the time to make the choices. You leave here, go to, oh, you have Monday off. I'm sorry. You go to work Tuesday. Yeah. The time to apply your choices is now.